Hey everyone, Jordan here. Today we're going to be taking a look at AMD's flagship desktop processor, the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. Could this be the new king of productivity and gaming? Now in this one we're going to give you a bit more of a concise video with some numbers from my initial testing that I've been doing. And I also have a few builds and other plans coming with this. So if you're into the more casual stuff or maybe you want to see how it might work as an editing processor, get subscribed and ding the bell as that's all coming soon. So the 9950X3D was kindly sent out by Scan Computers, one of the biggest UK retailers. Therefore, a massive range of components, pro audio and video gear, pre-built 3XS system, the list goes on. I'll link their website down below if you want to check them out. So the key things to know about the 9950X3D, again, on Zen 5 architecture, the 4 nanometer technology. AMD is using its second gen 3D stack vCache again on one CCD like we saw on the 9800X3D. Now for testing, I've got results from five different CPUs. We've got the Intra Ultra 7 465K and the Ultra 9 285K, which was tested on the Asus ROG Z890 Hero. Then I've got the 9800X3D, 7950X and 9950X3D that I tested on the Asus ROG uh, X870E-E. All oh, these numbers are really confusing. Now, I did want to test the 9900X2, but I unfortunately had some stability issues with that one. It just seemed to crash with anything that I threw at it, so I decided to omit it from the charts at this time. Now, the cooling, NHD15. I also used a graphite thermal pad this time to reduce the variables even more. We'll talk about thermals and what is later on too. I'm also going to be using the 4090 for graphics. Again, I'll speak why in a minute. Now we used a 48 gig kit of Corsair Dominator 8000 megahertz for both systems that I've got installed here. Now the new BIOS on the X870E-E now supports the higher frequency memory so we could use 8000 on XMP and Expo across both platforms so again less variables. We used a Solidine P44 Pro on the AMD side and a, a Seagate Fire Cooler 530 on the Intel. Everything was powered by an EVGA 1300 watt power supply. Now for the AMD CPUs, I had to use the balanced window options because of CCD parking. If you use anything else that makes the CPU use the second CCD without the vCache, as it has a high frequency, so it kind of defaults to that. However, that will mean that your 3D cache won't get used during your games, which is obviously the whole point of buying that processor. So uh, we did use the balanced profile for that. J2 Sensor's got a good video on that if you do want a bit more info. The reason we're going to use a 4090 at a low resolution is for the most part, the CPUs will be the limiting factor, so it makes it easier to compare the results without any limitations. Whereas if we use something like a mid-tier GPU, we could run into some potential bottlenecks. Now it's not a combination that most people will be using, but that's not what we're looking for. We're trying to determine the performance between the CPUs without being limited. So first up, we've got some benchmarks. Finally getting into it, we've got some CPU specific ones and then also some CPU GPU combo tests. We've got 3D Mark Time Spy and Steel Nomad, Blender Render Test, Cinebench and Geekbench 5. All of these are free if you want to download them and compare to your current system. Now on Geekbench, Cinebench and Time Spy, Intel's Ultra 9 285 comes ahead of the AMD CPUs by quite a gap in two of the tests. But we do see the 7950X top the charts for Steel Nomad. And then the 9950X 3D has its first place in the Blender Render Tests, even if the results are fairly close. For our gaming results, we're going to roll these across the screen and I'll talk more on some of them. Crisis had a big jump between the 9800X3D and the 9950X3D, which again I saw in Dirt 5. In Far Cry 6 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the X3D CPU stayed fairly close together, but these titles certainly made use of that extra level 3 cache, jumping in 30 frames higher than the 7950X and then 55 frames higher than the 285K in Tomb Raider. For the rest of the titles, the results were a fight for the top spot between the X3D CPUs, but you'll see the 9800X3D taking the top spot in the majority. There are also a couple of results such as Starfield and Cyberpunk Ray Traced, and these titles could see the CPUs change positions from run to run. Now for power consumption, we've got some very surprising results here as the newer, more powerful CPUs came with the lowest wattages. With a 70 watt difference from the Zen 4 7950X to the Zen 5 9950X3D, despite being the same TDP. Now for cooling, again we have some more surprising results with the 9950X3D being the coolest of the pack. Intel did make a big change with Ultra Series, making them a lot cooler, but even so, they're still not as cool as what AMD are offering. Now for Zen 5, AMD changed the layering of the X3D processors, putting the level three cache die underneath one of the core chiplet dies instead of above, which was on the 7000 series. Now the core is now directly in contact with the IHS, so that could be why we see such a difference in temps but I'm very surprised that the 9950X3D is cooler than the 9800X3D. 
I did actually do a double take at that and also double check the numbers and it is right as odd as it sounds. Overall, we have great performance from the 9950X3D, low temperatures and power consumption, smashes the Intel CPUs and anything gaming and comes a very close second in productivity. But the main kick is going to be the price. This is a £699 CPU, the most expensive one that I've covered to date. It does come with a lot of pros and that's a heavy con. If you need a CPU that answers the question of what do you want to use it for with yes, then this is the CPU for you. However, you will be paying for it. At the time of filming, you can get a 285K for £579, so £120 less. But with the caveat that there's no upgrade path. So once you buy that, you're literally at the end of the road. However, AMD has confirmed they will be using AM5 and support it till 2027. But given the price, that support and longevity are things that are baked into the cost of the CPU. Now, I'd really like to know your thoughts about this CPU in the comments below. It's something that I haven't covered this price point, as I mentioned. And is it a CPU that you could feel that you could justify buying? I feel that I'd have to have a pretty tidy income to splash that amount of money on a processor. But that being said, the phrase time equals money does come into mind. So maybe if you do splash out for it, then you could save a lot of time in the long run with a high performance. So let me know what you think down in the comments box below. I'll look forward to hearing what you guys think. Now I'm gonna leave this video a little bit open-ended. Like I said, I do wanna hear from you, your opinions, and if you could justify this CPU. And if there's anything else you'd like to see me cover, then please do let me know as well. We can look at doing that. I did recently do the 7900X versus the 7800X 3D, and that went down very well. So we could always look at doing some more singular comparisons if that's something of interest. And then of course, get subscribed and ding the bell if you enjoyed this one. I've also got the builds coming with this CPU and more of like an editing take on it, I think will be quite interesting. I've got a very nice theme system coming up as well. Like I said, anything else you'd like me to cover, anything you'd like me to add into the benchmark suite as well, that would be very handy to know. I'm trying to um, make it a little bit like wider of things we can cover. So yeah, please leave any comments. Big thank you to Scan Computers for sending this out for me to cover. I will leave the links for this in the description box below if you're baller enough to pick one up. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one.